Hi, everyone. So quick shifting of gears. Imagine you were going to send an SMS message, and then you said, wait a minute. First, I want to upgrade to the Teams JavaScript SDK version 2. And so, and so that's why we're taking a sidestep here today. So uh, while Jeet already started the discussion on this, it's pretty cool stuff. And so let me show you in a little bit more detail. Uh, first, I'd like to give you just a little bit more context into what is the Teams JavaScript SDK. Um, there's a bunch of different SDKs that you may encounter when you're doing development for Microsoft 365. A lot of them call backend REST services. And so I just want to make clear Teams JavaScript SDK is the SDK that you use inside of Microsoft Teams apps um, that control the client. They, they, they pretty much interact with either the desktop client, the browser-based client, or the mobile client. And in general, although there may be some backend processing, you're not really aware of that. So this will get interesting in a few minutes when we get into uh, kind of contrasting what you would use the graph for using probably the graph SDK or maybe the PNP SDK. Um, but in general, I think this one is going to be more, you're going to think of this more as something that you're working with the client application uh, rather than with the server side, if that makes sense. So the biggest enhancement, as Wajid already pointed out and was announced in build and, dem and demoed by uh, Rabia, by Dan's and my colleague, Rabia Williams, here are some of the high level enhancements. So multi-host support is big, right? So this is the this is kind of the big splash is that now you can run these applications in and still in preview in Outlook and office.com, but I'll show you that. But it's also still obviously works in Teams. There are some new namespaces which I'll talk about. A lot of the old version 1 SDK used um, callbacks, so it was kind of a little bit retro there. Now we're using promises. Although there is backward compatibility, and I'll talk about that too, there's some new API calls. And as I mentioned, we're backward compatible. Two concepts that I want you to understand are really capabilities and hosts. So a capability is a logical grouping of APIs that provide some set of functionality. And you can see them all listed here. So app is something that you would use in, all, in any app, whereas calendar or chat are relating to calendars and chats. Hosts are the different Microsoft 365 applications that can run your app. And yes, we've got apps inside of apps now. Um, and I guess that's probably been true for a while, but just sort of <laughs> realizing it here as I'm talking about it. Anyway, so here you can see a matrix of all of the capabilities and what hosts they are supported in. So, for instance, Calendar is available in Teams and Outlook. Calls and chats are available in Teams only. Mail is available only in Outlook, et cetera. So it kind of makes sense if you think about it, like this is really growing into something that can span more than just Teams. Um, there are, each one of these capabilities is also a namespace in the SDK. And these namespaces all support a single call called is supported. So the correct way to query and say, geez, it, is it possible for me to send a mail or is it possible for me to initiate a call? You don't really want to go in and say, um, am I in Microsoft Teams? Am I in Microsoft Outlook? You can do that. I'll show you how to do that. There's reasons to do that. But you know what? We might change it in the future. We might suddenly start supporting calls in another application. So you're much better off saying is supported. And in this case, mail is supported is going to come back true only if you're in Outlook, but that could change in the future. So code, you know, future proof your code and use the is supported rather than an explicit check on which um, application. So for example, here I am, if I'm in Teams, mail is supported is going to come back false. But suppose I just want to show some different information in Teams, or maybe I want to theme my page a little differently in Teams. Well, there's a way to do that too. And so that would be done using the, the Teams app context. And there's a property in there called host.name. And there's also an enumeration, Microsoft Teams.hostname.x. So you can just come in here and say, look, is the host name Teams? And then I can theme it for Teams. That's appropriate use of, of the uh, context variable as opposed to the is supported flag. I'll show a few of the 
capability APIs here just as a sample. These are just selected. I couldn't fit it on the slide. There's too many. Notice that they all have is supported. So you can just check before you go trying to compose a meeting or a chat and, and just make sure that it, you're in an environment where that's supported. The other thing is, and would you keep me honest on this, please, but looking at this, what I'm seeing is that although some of these things might appear to overlap what we have in the Microsoft graph, these are really client side calls. So what's going to happen is, the, and a lot of these used to be um, available and still are available as deep links. So for instance, there was always a deep link. If I want to chat with Dan and if, if his network is working better and I can chat with him, I could do a deep link that would open up Teams in a chat with Dan, right? Now I can do that with an SDK call called Open Chat, which is nice because it's smart enough to know if at some point a, a chat should be available in some other host other than Teams. You don't have now hard-coded a deep link into Teams. Right, so that's that's a, a really nice way to do it. But keep in mind that open chat is not going to like the graph would allow you to code up some messages and send them under program control. That's not what this does. This is going to open up the chat window. And so these tend to be more user interface types of features. For instance, compose mail is going to put you into a new mail view in the UI. Or um, let's see, people select people is not going to do a programmatic selection. It's going to launch a people picker and then return to you which person got picked. So just to sort of kind of deconfuse a little bit, maybe what you would do in the graph versus what you would do with this SDK. So without further ado, let's get into a demo and I'll show you an app that's running in all of these hosts that are currently supported. So here I am in Teams. And if I come down here to, and this is the same demo, by the way, that Rabia uh, showed in build, and she did the, the SDK conversion and all the upgrades on this. So this is a lot of her good work here. So I want to take my hat off to, to Rabia Williams on this. So here I am. And yeah, uh, Russell asks, isn't SharePoint a supported host? I would love it if somebody else could answer that because I really don't understand myself. I, I can not. probably quickly comment on that one for now. It's not uh, potentially in the future. So so uh, technically, uh, SharePoint does support already Microsoft Teams applications, um, but we haven't validated it to be V2 completely compliant. So so it will be there in the future. So already today oh. and been there for many years, actually, you can track any Microsoft Teams application to Microsoft, uh, sorry, SharePoint app catalog and start using that in the pages. So. Thanks. Yeah, I was a little confused about that myself, and I never, I never want to speculate on what the product teams are doing. So thanks so much, Vesa, for clarifying. So, so back to the demo. Here we are, and I'm in my Northwind orders application. This is the experimental version. By the way, this is coming soon in a lab environment near you. You'll be able to build this lab up called something in um, an environment called Teams App Camp, which Rabia and I and other teammates are working on, uh, and this will show kind of give you a hands-on of converting a SaaS application or a single page app into a Teams app with all the different features. So it's a lot of fun. Anyway, what Rabia did here is she took this and made it SDK v2, and I'll show you the code, some code changes in a minute, but let me just show you what it does. So here I am inside of my, uh, I can see all my orders from Northwind, right? I can also come in and see products and kind of browse into those and do all sorts of things. And, you know, I, I could, get into this functionality more, but let's let's focus on the multi-host part, right? So another thing I could do is I could go into Office Home. This has surprised me. A lot of people live in this. So some people will say like, why do I care about Office Home? Other people are like, oh, wow, I live in this, right? Because here's my app, right? So if you want to know how to get to an app, there it is. Notice that the UI is slightly different. And uh, she took the chart out here. And I'll show you how that's done in the code, but that was intentional. It's it's reasonable that your app would maybe behave a little bit differently when it's running in Office or in Teams. And then the other option, which is in Outlook. So here's the same app running in Outlook, right? And so that works the same way. And the auth is all there nice and, uh, and um, single sign-on and all that kind of stuff. 
Another fun thing I can do because Outlook is I can use a messaging extension. So if you're not familiar with these, they work in Teams, of course, already. But now I can come in here and send somebody an email and could you check inventory? And what do I want to check inventory on? So in the bad old days, I would go look up the SKU for the item that I needed and type it into my email. And then Katie would get the email and she would have to go look up the SKU to figure out what it was. And then she'd go to the warehouse and all that kind of fun stuff. Now I can just come in here and uh, click on the little apps in right underneath where I'm wording my uh, composing my email. And I can come in here and actually search for a product and there's some products so let's go into aniseed syrup which is conveniently begins with the letter a which is why i like it and um we've just gotten a huge shipment so we now have a hundred of these and so i could actually update or the recipient of this email more realistically could update the stock so i'm going to do it right now so that i don't have to switch users Oh, doesn't like it until I send it. All right, keep me honest, keep me honest. Let's send this. And then I'll go over here to my sent items and I'll update it here. And I can update the stock. And wow, that's great. So now I've just saved, I've just really streamlined things because Katie, upon getting this email, she doesn't have to go look it up. She doesn't have to open another application. She can work from this actionable message right inside of Outlook. And this came from my Teams app, which is or now an M365 app. And in fact, if I come back to my overall view and let's go into products, and I believe that was a condiment. Yep, there it is. And there's the updated inventory. So very nice. So let's look at the code. So the first thing that I had to do was I had to update my schema. So if you are there's not a lot of changes, but the version number matters, okay? So if you are going to use the preview functionality of hosting in Outlook and Office, then you need version 1.13. If you want to just use the new SDK for just future proof, keeping up, getting bug fixes, getting some of those other enhancements, but you're only gonna run it in Teams, then the fully supported version is 1.12. So 1.12, uh, shipped at, at build and lets you use the V2 SDK. 1.13 is in preview and supports Office and Outlook, just to be really clear about that. So let me show you some, some code samples. Here we are actually initializing the SDK. Now, you're only supposed to initialize once, and I had fun writing an article about how to do this, where I've got different web components that are firing off requests at the same time. Um, we're actually going to store the promise centrally, and then teams.app.initialize returns a promise to prevent calling the initialize more than once. It doesn't cause any huge problems, but it does flag an error, so trying to be a good citizen here and not initialize it more than once. Notice that this, if you are familiar with this, the old call didn't have the .app namespace in there. So it was just Microsoft Teams.initialize, and it used a callback. So then you were constantly wrapping functions and functions and stuff. So this is much, much cleaner and easier. The old way still works for backward compatibility, but, you know, eventually it, it's officially deprecated, but still works. So, you know, over time, you've got some time now to migrate things over to the new calling syntax. And of course, it makes your, your code a lot simpler. Now I'm going to scroll down a little and show you the theming. So when the theming gets set on the page, we're going to look to see if we're in Microsoft 365, which is our own little function here. And if, it, if the initialize fails, it's going to be mean that we're not even in, in any M365 location. And then we're going to grab the context and then check context.app.host.name. And depending on if that's Teams, Outlook, or Office, we're going to set different style sheets on here. And if it's Teams, we're also going to register a theme change handler so that we can update our background color, et cetera, when somebody does, you know, changes the theme in Teams so that we can be nice and up to date. By the way, this is not to, I'm occasionally glancing at, uh, <laughs> at the uh, chat. Can this be done in bulk? I think the Teams Toolkit has some assist on that, but I'm not up to date on it. 
I don't still think it's in bulk. I think it would be like bring your app in and it'll help with the conversion. Is it an SPFX app? No, it is not. This is a standalone vanilla JavaScript app. And in fact, SPFX does not yet support the SDK v2 to my knowledge. That is going to require more work by the SharePoint team. So this is a standalone Teams app, which means it's running in an iframe and the messaging extension is running using the bot framework. The taskbar is on the left. Does that mean Bob is still on Win 10? Yes, it does. Please don't get too mad at me. I like the fact that I can hide the date and time and that I can keep the taskbar on the left where I have more real estate than down at the bottom. So uh, someday I'll switch my development machine over to Windows 11 uh, when they provide me with those, those features. So anyways, that's, that's the point there. Now let's look at the identity stuff. So this particular app knows how to run inside or outside of M365. So it's actually going to revert to using MSAL for authentication if we're running outside. So you can see a little bit of that here. We're going to get an app. This is just a generic get access token. Again, I don't want to get the access token too often um, if I have different parts of the code. So I'm going to cache a promise here. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab this access token. If I'm in M365, I just call get auth token. Again, this used to be callbacks. Isn't it wonderful? Now it's just a promise. Promises are beautiful, especially when people keep their promises, which this does. And if not, then we start digging into MCEL goodness, right? So that's, that's kind of how that piece works. And then finally, let me show you one other little thing. So if I'm in Teams and go back to my Teams one, and I go into one of these details, right? One of the things I can do is chat with a sales contact for this order, right? Maybe something came up. I'm trying to get those uh, Scottish long breads and the, the long breads came in too short this year. So, you know, what am I going to do? I need to chat with the sales rep. So I click the button and bang, I'm in a chat. And that's what I mean. See what I mean by um, it's a user, it's a, it's a client level function. So that was one of those new capabilities. And yeah, it's not actually up sending the chat message. It's putting me in the UI so that I can send the chat message, if that makes sense, right? So anyway, that is only going to be visible if I'm inside of Teams. So let's go back to the code. And what you'll see is that it's going to say if Microsoft Teams dot chat dot is supported is true. So if all of a sudden Outlook has a chat capability or Microsoft, you know, some other feature part of Microsoft starts supporting chat, they're trying to sort of ease away from like kind of hard coded. This is, these are the five apps that we have or whatever, and sort of make it a little bit more open-ended. If it's supported, then uh, we're going to go ahead and make the adaptive card and display it and um, go ahead and send the open group chat when someone clicks the button. Makes sense? And, and go ahead and make use of one of those new SDKs. So I think that's about it for the demo. Let me just go back quickly to slide and show the call to action. So if you would like to upgrade right now, the first step is to install the SDK. Uh, there's the NPM command. If you're not bundling, and some of the cool kids are not bundling these days, you can actually, there's CDN links and all sorts of things up there uh, on NPM where you can grab that. Then you want to update your Teams app manifest to either 1.12 or 1.13. And then over time, update your code, uh, check out the capabilities and hosts, uh, translate your callbacks into promises, rejoice that your code is much shorter and easier to read. Mm -hmm.